serve as cloud condensation nuclei. This important excerpt from Dr. Kirby's 2009 presentation makes it clear that IPCC climate scientists are fully aware that jet aircraft are dumping aerosols into the atmosphere with the effect of deliberate climate warming. There are very, there's plenty of evidence that large regions of the climate are lacking sufficient aerosol to form clouds. Contrails are a, a well-known example of that. These are not smoke trails. These are clouds which are seeded by jets dumping aerosols into the upper atmosphere. These are clouds which are seeded by jets dumping aerosols into the upper atmosphere. But if there was a conspiracy to use jet-produced clouds to cool the atmosphere, would it work? No. The contrails that are spreading, that you can identify as contrails, those would tend to warm the atmosphere. Everything that we know about um, would say that. The contrails that are spreading, that you can identify as contrails, those would tend to warm the atmosphere. Everything that we know about Deliberate um, would warming. say that. Dr. Pinner's statement is not taken lightly by climate scientists. Her comments echo the 1999 climate change publication titled IPCC Special Report on Aviation and the Global Atmosphere. On page 17, the quote, Contrails tend to warm the Earth's surface, similar to thin, high clouds, unquote. So, jet aircraft are dumping chemical aerosols high in the atmosphere to create artificial contrails that spread into thin, high, artificial clouds that your TV meteorologist has been told to misrepresent by telling the public they're only ice crystals. Dr. Kirby's almost too casual comment confirming that jet aircraft are dumping aerosols into the atmosphere reveals that this covert geoengineering and chemtrail operation is well known by government agencies like NASA, NOAA, and the FAA. The IPCC climate scientists being paid to churn out climate change propaganda, and geoengineers like David Keith, Ken Caldera, and their boss, Bill Gates. The public needs to demonstrate their outrage at this massive conspiracy of government secrecy that allows these toxins and bioweapons to rain down on global populations with impunity. We've had enough. If you've noticed today, many places that you go, everybody's got that cough that doesn't seem ever to go away. It's frightening because my healthy patients have had it, my sick patients have had it, it has seemed to plague everybody, and no one seemed to be spared from enjoying this hack at one time or another. It's extremely difficult to get, and it doesn't seem to be dependent on your immune system, which makes me suspicious that it's coming from an external source. An interesting article came across the internet a few months ago that talked about the chemtrail flu. Now realizing we're breathing some very strange things in the atmosphere, taking a totally different approach, and this has been a touchdown for my patients here at DHS, corporations are modifying our weather all the time and they're modifying it in ways that cover thousands and thousands of square miles programs are impacting microclimates needed for our crops to survive and needed for pollination the other issue 
is that a lot of times we're talking about mitigation for climate change. It's rather an undefined term at this period of time. And so what happens is that many times we're talking about artificially putting chemicals like sulfur or particulates into the atmosphere in what they call geoengineering schemes to reduce, supposedly, global warming. And if you take and you put up into our skies chemicals to reduce the amount of sunlight reaching the earth, you are going to begin to reduce crop production. Without the process of photosynthesis, whereby plants from direct sunlight gain the energy to grow, to produce crops, we are going to find ourselves, if we mitigate in that direction, impacting the crop production, not only here in the United States, but worldwide. What you're seeing now, a lot of times, many scientists know, especially at NASA and in other areas, that the skies that we're seeing are not normal cloud formations. These are man-made. In California, the State Department of Health drinking water tests were examined between 1970 and this year, and we found unusual spiking in barium, aluminum, strontium, manganese, and all of these spiked at the same time in various drinking water supplies across the state of California and also in Arizona. So what's happening with these atmospheric tests is that aluminum, as one example, gets into the root systems of our trees, and it looks like the trees are dying of drought, but they're not. Many of our forests in Redding, California, and other areas are dying from warmer temperatures produced by persistent jet contrails, also impacting tree health and crop health. They know from scientific studies back in the 1970s that they deplete beneficial ozone in the atmosphere by releasing nitric acid. And worse, and she coughs sometimes so hard she throws up more than spitting up, but everything. Okay. But not every time she eats. Uh, and she's just coughing hard. And we, today she was having rapid breathing of more than 60 right. per minute. So, uh, okay, we need to.
they talked about using nano aluminum and the reason they were using it they say well it stays suspended in the atmosphere longer because the particles are so small and it acts like a cloud to reflect the heat supposedly back out to outer space uh, well the problem is it slowly uh, descends down uh, to the earth enters the lakes and streams plants take it up so then the aluminum content of the plants we eat is much higher the water we drink is much higher uh, and we breathe it um, the filters in house filtering systems not small enough to filter it out so gradually nano aluminum content inside your house elevates uh, and what we know is that nano aluminum is infinitely more inflammatory than normal size aluminum so it's more toxic to the brain uh, once it gets in and it can penetrate all parts of the cell it easily passes through the membranes and blood brain barrier etc uh, so knowing uh, all of this uh, i was just astounded that they were spraying uh, hundreds and thousands of tons of nano aluminum all over the world uh, particularly the united states and i you know did a little research and looked in my own case in my skies and, and i see these tight patterns and it's obvious a pattern it's not contrail uh, the whole thing contrails is nonsense you watch a plane fly and it turns on this cloud and uh, of material coming out of the back of it and it stops and there's a break and then it starts back up well i knew the jet's not cutting his engine off right uh, so uh you know you have a a 747 or a 767 or something we know it's not turning its engine on and off and we know that it's not flying in a checkered pattern and uh then pretty soon uh, for instance we've noticed lately there's been none of the chemtrails or very few of them well did uh, fly um i have a lung problem it is not caused from smoking even though i did smoke cigarettes um it did not help we know that but neither does breathing chemtrails so there's more people today especially women under 30 that are getting lung cancer that have never smoked never will smoke never did smoke so people need to wake up there's something going on in the air all you got to do is look up and you see the tic-tac-toe boards and the uh the symbols they're putting up there and all that the the mess around whatever they're doing you're breathing those chemicals i've seen fibers that get blown around uh last november i held some i tried to pick some up that were in my grass they look like spider webs when i picked it up they melted in my hand and were gone so they weren't spider webs um you can do your own research on that for now i don't have any official news so i'm not going to comment on it all I know is what I saw. I had two witnesses that were there. And uh, if you look up the research and the side effects, it's similar to what I have right now. I've got severe lung damage, uh, usually caused by environmental or genetic. I have no genetic history that I know of. I'm going to try and talk to some of my family, but I've never heard of anybody. A commander who can control the weather has a weapon as powerful as any Air Force. During the Vietnam War, the U.S. military began seeding clouds along the Ho Chi Minh Trail to create floods and wash out North Vietnamese supply routes. It was known as Operation Popeye, and crews flew over 2,000 spray missions. I was told initially by a friend, he said his brother was in the military service. He said when there is these heavy spray days, heavy days when there's lots of persistent contrails to keep his family inside when they were outside exposed to, to have them go in and take showers and he couldn't talk about it he couldn't explain more than that we have extensive studies that the civilian aircraft the airliners were laying plumes that basically dissipated within seconds to two minutes the military aircraft in the same airspace laid plumes lasting four four days Ago, people talked about seeding clouds with silver iodide to or, make it uh, rain or try to make it rain well the military has long wanted to prevent the fall of rain and that's what they do if you put a, a par fine particles of material 
in the air where, where clouds form, the little tiny droplets of water are either absorbed or blocked from coalescing, getting big enough to huh. fall as rain. So it inhibits the fall of rain. Or does it change also the complexity of the cloud where it doesn't even form? Well, it's, uh, it, it, it changes a lot of things. And, and ultimately, it, well, it, it also, there are other things that it does. Uh, you might think, or, or people might uh, try to deceive you into thinking, well, it reflects some sunlight away. I mean, this is what the geoscientists are, are trying to promote future geoengineering, where they put particles in the air to serve as, as a, a sunshade for the Earth.